Hey, it's Ben's from WPLaunchClub.com with your WordPress tip of the day. All right, this is one that I really think you have to pay attention to. I previously was someone who used MailChimp, and it was a really great platform to start upon before the days when we had the CRM plugin known as Fluent CRM. Now, I'm not picking on Fluent CRM uh, or pointing it out because it's the only choice, but because it's an awesome choice for anybody who wants to have all the benefits of a typical email list combined with the power of marketing automation. And because it's a plugin that works natively inside of WordPress, it really offers great savings and other benefits in the form of number one, lower cost overall, number two, simplicity, and number three, most importantly, you own it and control it. In this example, I'm gonna show you how today to do the feature that I enjoyed the most from MailChimp, but within your WordPress site. And that is to really quickly and easily publish a notice to your list of a new blog post. Now in 2021 into 2022, I predict that we're gonna see a resurgence of RSS feeds over social media. This has a lot to do with the fact that Facebook is going through a lot of changes. In the original days of the internet, we used to have a list of people that we owned and controlled that we would directly send a feed of our new information to. And I think that resurgence is a reflection of people wanting that kind of tighter community and connection. So here's how to do this in a way that at the moment isn't really possible through a, tr a traditional RSS feed reader. In a normal setup of WordPress, if you go to yourdomain.com slash feed, you will get the feed. So wplaunchclub.com slash feed in most WordPress setups with the latest version will give you an XML feed of your data. Now, if you would like to do so, you can create an email that posts a link to the last one or two feeds and then send that out to the segment of people that it matches. Now, when I originally set up this tutorial, I was gonna do that, but then I decided there might be an easier way to do this. And instead of putting in the feed widget, which I can show you what that would look like, if you typically went in and said RSS feed, and you posted that feed URL to your site, wplaunchclub.com feed, you would get a nice option here for the RSS settings. And you'll notice I can say, I wanna send just the last one. And if you limit the things that you post to, for example, not putting the fluff of the date in the excerpt, you get a pretty interesting link. It works pretty nicely. But I thought that people might wanna have something additionally. And so when I looked at this, I decided, you know what's just as easy? Let's just go ahead and make a template that allows me to very quickly put in the featured image and put in the link. And in doing so, I think that more people will respond to it. But just at least understand, you can either use the RSS feed as a block, or you can go ahead and do what I'm gonna show you next. So what I did here was I created an email template with Fluent CRM. And to do that is very simple. You would go over emails, email template, and you would simply click create a new template. And that's what I did here. And I'm, I'm not gonna do it from scratch necessarily, but I'll show you, this is what you would be looking at. All right, so from there, you're gonna go ahead and put in a title for the template. That's just for your benefit. Next, the email subject could be something that you could change every time you use the template, but I tested some things and I'm putting in a compelling headline that I feel will get a lot of people to open it. Likewise, a pre-header is something that is what's shown inside of the sneak preview of most email clients, and for a lot of people that's important. So it's sort of like the first thing you say and then the second thing you say are the details. I like to ask a question because I think that opens, uh, gets people to open more emails. Next, I kept the template really simple. I went ahead and used the simple blocks, uh, box template option. You could use centered or you could use plain left. It doesn't matter, but don't put a lot of stuff in there. My experience is that people today look at email as their busiest channel and you don't want to muck it up with something that when they look at it, they kind of, oh my gosh, so much to consume. Keep it short, simple, clean, and in my case, identifiable. I feel that why, when I put in this logo and I put in this simple format, after a couple times, people who stick around are gonna get used to the fact that, yeah, I know what this is, and when I want to, I can click on it, but I'm not gonna be bothered by it otherwise. In other words, don't put in so much information to cause them anxiety. Next, I went ahead and put in the information that was relevant. First of all, I started out with just an image with a logo. And since you can upload this to your media library, it's just like doing it on your website with any other Gutenberg block. 
Be sure that the size of it is smaller than 450 pixels. In most cases, any email reader will accept an image up to 450. After that, things can start to get very weird and it can look unusual and not what you intended. So I'm gonna keep it very small and I scaled it using the full size image for clarity, but I said only make it 150 pixels wide. Next, I went ahead and added the contact personal name. And the way you can do that is by typing in a free line and hitting the ampersand and you can get the, what I'll call the merge tags here. And what I did is I used the first name of the person. So in this case, I just said, hi, merge tag, contact first name. Then I went ahead and said just one really simple thing. I just said, hey, I just posted this quick tip. Importantly, I put a link here that's gonna be relevant because some people don't show images in their email reader. Then I added an image block and I used the link feature. And for the image, as well as for this link here in the text, I simply went to my blog, and yes, it's a little annoying because I have to do one more step, but I went ahead and grabbed the link of the latest post that I wanted to share. And so in this case, wplaunchclub.com blog, and I just simply grabbed the URL by right-clicking on it um, for the quick tip, or what I'm calling the blog quick tips here. So I just clicked this and I said, uh, copy link address. And I use that for both the image link as well as for this uh, text link. And then finally, I put in just a closing, which looks like my normal emails. You know, cheers, Spence. Now, here's an important part that, again, I've notified the, the team over at Fluent about, and it's just annoying because it's a Gutenberg issue more than anything. But I found that with the images, there is nothing in there to add the CSS attribute of clear both. And so when I was testing my emails, I found that depending on the email reader or the client, sometimes the text would wrap around the image because you'll notice there's no option for align none. And if you have a line left and the image is not full width, sometimes the name will wrap up around the right side. So to defeat that, I put in this little snippet that you're welcome to use. I simply used an HTML block and then I pasted this in. This essentially puts in sort of like a, like a return on an old fashioned typewriter. It says clear this line and go on to a fresh line. And once I put that in below any image, and in this case above the image, I was able to get the results I wanted. If you wanna test whether your emails look proper, use a free plugin like WP Mail Logging. Here, this allows you to see in HTML what the messages come out as for most readers. I found that once I set that up with the uh, little HTML snippets, that the text went to the next line and everything looked as I had hoped. If I look at an earlier version of this that I sent to myself, you'll notice that the text got kind of weird. You see here how the text is creeping up on the side? That's the kind of thing that it's always helpful to test before you send out to a large audience. Now, when do I recommend using this option? Well, next time you want to send out a campaign, you simply can go into your Fluent CRM and you pick the number of people from the segment you want to send this to. Since I've saved this as a template, it's really easy to use it in the future. I just create a new campaign. I can give it a new name, you know, new post. And then I can choose that template and simply modify it on the spot. So using email template means I can choose the one I previously used and I'll just simply switch out the URL for the image as well as the link that's associated with the text and the image of themselves. It's still not fully automated like it is in MailChimp, but it's pretty darn close. And for most people, I think that's suitable because this gives me a little ability to continue testing my headlines and it only takes a minute to send out. I look forward to showing you more quick tips for WordPress and I'll see you on that next video.